Royal Pro Motocross 450 season is underway. Another great start, KTM Ryder, that is no surprise. Cooper Webb, lightning quick off the line, indoors and out, and he has seen Cerullo get sexed and then almost got Ferrandez as well. Four riders, four different brands, all in the same shot. There. Incredible speed and qualifying, and he is not wasting any time. Unbelievable, he's gone from fourth to first in about four quarters. Yellow flags are out of the top of this hill. It's seeing Cerullo I, down. I thought it was him, right? Comes out of the turn. Oh, you see, he was already breaking traction beforehand. Oh, and what it? That oh, was an awkward salt into it. There. Yep. And Ferrandez has gotten around Webb, so Ferrandez finds himself in the number one. The rain slick and this regular slick all at once. Sexton at around the outside of Webb and made it actually look easy. Held up Ferrandez, or as Sexton was just putting in a mad dash charge, half a lap to go, and he can see Ferrandez. Oh, Dylan Ferrandez trying to win his first ever moto in his first shot at it. On a and he stays low, he gets a bow to the ground. Wheel to the wheel, to wheel over the finish. Sexton putting in a charge. Oh. Ferrandez will hold on. And Ferrandez has to be surprised. He gate down and see what turns out right here in motocross. That looked like another great early in Moto2. Well, you saw uh, AP, great start for the number seven, Aaron Plessinger. On the attack after Plessinger. That section is very deceiving, very steep, very off cabin, very tough. I think it might. Yes, Ken rocks into the lead. And he was Monster Energy star Yamaha number seven, caught him. Oh, and now Plessinger mistake off the track. One, three scores, but how about Ken Roxon? Back in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, and he wins the moto. Dylan Ferrandez has won his first ever Pro Motocross race on a 450. Controls the lead. Ferrandez to the inside. Takes second away from Webb. And Roxon now moves around Webb as well. Good in these opening laps. And once again, moving yeah. forward. But Roxon doesn't give up. Roxon tightrope walking down the inside. There was no room in there. And repasses. And now goes after Cianzarillo. And is in the lead. Good start. Sexton, Craig, Muskan, and Plessy are rounding out your top ten. So a lot of familiar faces once again. Don't forget, seeing Cerullo and Ferrandez, they are not strangers to each other. They battled tooth and nail for the 250 10 and 11th. Get used to it. There's going to be a lot of disappointed riders this year. There's just not enough room in the top 10. Yeah, this is the closest he's been all motor. He looks up the inside. Whoa! Whoa! Leaves no room. Actually takes Roxon off of the race track. It's a 10, mm -hmm. but at this level, that's what you got to do. And uh, Roxon will look back at that. On Mav TV. And these two are pro pulling each other along. Adam seems reload. Well, obviously that uh, that pass on Roxon uh, affected his lap time a little bit, but last lap for Osborne. But it is a lead trio all alone right now. And honestly, a mistake. But no one really getting away from anyone at the moment. Even when you go back, I was able to get close right here to make that pass when it happened a few laps back. Ferrandez on the move. Since Rello is maybe dealing with a bit of arm pump, that was one of the things he said last week, why he struggles with lower body, so possibly a little arm pump setting in. Is it going to come unraveled here for Sins? Yeah, it's most dangerous. Ooh, he tried Down to go the inside, there. and I think Ferrandez has it. He does. That was a quick attack. Roxon trying to get him back. A lot of times that turn only really has the inside or the outside. We see the outside coming into play more likely in moto number two. Look at that inside. Ooh, can he hook oh. it? A little bit of contact. Slight contact. Ferrandez to the lead. Done. It would be huge. But Cincerillo's coming right back. You know, let's replay. Watch this. I'll show no, you the pass back. here. No, we're back at it. Cincerillo almost got it done. Now oh, Ferrandez. Send a message right back to Cincerillo saying, don't try to push me off the track. Yep, and it's allowed Roxon. Let's see if Adam can learn anything on this downhill section. No, in fact, he's going to get passed by Roxon. Still there. Behind Ferrandis. I'd say less than two seconds in it. They have pulled away from Cianciarello. Been able to drop Cianciarello just a little bit. Time will expire before they get to the finish. It's a different line compared to Ferrandis there. We're going to find out in a hurry because the 94, he is on the gas right now. He continues to close. It's just all filtered back to that inside. 
get around the lap and no problem. Should be two to go next time they come across the finish line. This is great racing. Why he didn't race the outdoors last year. He's on the inside. Oh, almost came together. Fernandez oh. airs out the jump. Couldn't get the landing. It's right there. Goes to take the line away. Fernandez. You see, he just gets thrown off just a little bit. This would be huge for Ken Roxon. To have a late moto charge yeah. to retake the lead is a real statement for He just railed that turn there. Ferrandis wants this. The one thing you know about Dylan Ferrandis, he is... Right here, we reclaim the lead. And in a dramatic late race charge, Ken Roxon claims... second well he was on the outside he made good work coming to the second turn and tomac on the number three is right there as well best start of the season for et3 so this late in the races he's so quick in the opening lap and just like that he's into the number one spot oh that was really well wanting to see where's tomac where's tomac he's been coming from behind now he's up in the battle yeah and barsha by the way has been riding very well this well as we always say, it's gonna be, it's set up for a great moto. Look at this. Yeah, it's 14th, but this field is so tight. There he is. This track's so easy to make a mistake on. Cincerello absolutely nailed that last corner before the finish line standing in. The wheel, wow, cutting across the ruts is Sexton. Gets that rear wheel on the ground. They almost collide on the takeoff of the jump. Can he go the long way around Barsha? Yeah, a lot less distant for Barsha, but it's so rough on the inside. Me up from the back oh. of the group. Look at Eli Tomac. What a drive out of that corner. Battling Plessinger. I don't know if Plessinger missed a gear or something. Seen but... Cerullo and Tomac. So we wanted to see what Tomac can do with a good start. I don't know if I'm reading too much into this, but I feel like Eli looks a little bit different than I've seen the first five motors. A little bit of that old flair coming back, but if I... good thing he does not have a review mirror because it is packed. Almost had a little... Sniff getting up the inside. Jumping downhill. They got his feet ripped off in that deep right. Don't even know what which battle to watch. Unbelievable four riders in the same section right now. And Messinger knows it. And again, AP out of that turn just didn't get the drive he wanted. Yes, he gets Sexton and Plessinger. And Plessinger just for Sexton. I mean, sorry for uh, Plessinger. There's a slight gap. A bit. Roxon's there. Roxon is looking to get Ferrandis. It's going to be on the inside downhill. Oh, look at Kenny. Back to the outside. He'll get a good drive. Ooh, but good job by Ferrandis. to watch the battle. You got the smooth Roxon and the very aggressive Ferrandis. As they fire through the mechanics area and across the start. Oh, Roxon launches it. Angle. Yep. He's going to square it up. Outside to in, and Ken Roxon has made the pass for third. Right up the bank turn, and the crowd are going nuts. Woo! Ferrandis, a huge drive downhill. Wheel. Who's going to exit? Ooh. A big scrub by Ferrandis. He's going to meet on the exit of this corner. He's going to take the line away, can he? Because of the ruts. Now, can he goes to the outside? Three or four corners. Ferrandis locks it back down. Okay, so first we'll show you the Roxon pass, and then you can see Ferrandis got him back down. And here's that battle for the lead. Yeah, you don't, don't know where to look right now, but this is great. You can hear the two Kawasaki riders have done. We have seen Ferrandis and Roxon absolutely sending it. That, that battle yeah. hold each other a little bit. Look at Eli over the top of that crest. So, and that flying into that corner. This is the Eli Tomac that we expect to see in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. ET3 is back with his teammate, Adam Cianciarulo, for the lead here at High Point. And Tomac since really going to fight back around the outside, and he does. They almost come together. Yeah, Cincerello got out of the rut, lost the spot, but wow, when we're coming back from break, we're seeing that old Eli a little bit, and it looks sensational. And it looks a whole lot different right now. Look at this. He's flying. 
That's the Eli Tomac that you expect to see in the division. I don't know what's changed, but it changed in a hurry. Look at this. Ferrandez has caught Cien Cerullo. That happened pretty quickly. Yeah. With the better on the south side. Once they get through this little ravine area, we've certainly seen right. But late in the motos, those insides that everyone's been going to are getting chopped up. So here's the thing. If these, oh, mistake from Cincerello. He's Nothing left the door is wrong here. He's losing all kinds of time. That bike is kicking all over the place. In this corner, Cincerello going to drift wide back in the line of Ferrandez. So he's back under control right there again. He's got the inside line. He can take the line away at the exit. Can he get there? Oh! And Broxton is right in it as well. Almost three wide. It is three wide into this corner. Can overall win today. Oh. Unless Roxon can get Ferrandez and Ferrandez to shut the door. There was a lap of a deal with that. A pick they line. Cincerello now fighting back on the outside. This is unbelievable. Ferrandez. And meanwhile, Eli Tomac is glad he knows nothing about this battle. He's right back in it. Roxon showing a wheel to Ferrandez, who at least temporarily is in control. Back in on the 14. The one thing that has been also impressive is just the consistency. We're going to Redbud. Roxon is there, challenging Ferrandez. They both know how important this position is. I, I think he can. He, yeah. he looked good in practice earlier, and uh, he loves that track. He's so good. Eli Tomac, first moto win of 2021. And Dylan Ferrandez is going to win the overall. 50s, look at that. You can see those guys. They know there's a lot of respect there. Those guys hung it out. That was. <laughs> Eli Tomac around the outside. Motosport.com, whole shot of the day. Seen Cerullo on the number nine, edging ahead of Tomac for second. Bad news for everyone else. Ferrandez. Oh, Seen oh! Cerullo down and down hard. Lost the front for Ferrandez, but Roxon is right there with him. This is going to be good, and then just behind them. It... Roxon always so good early in the race. He gets to the inside, makes the move on Ferrandez. Ferrandez, such a fighter, comes right back on him. Side by side. Lost him a little bit. Can he do LaRocco's leap? Oh, he gets a big bounce there. They've groomed the face of it, and they do. Oh, Roxon almost threw it away. Man, how many times have we seen guys get super loose coming out of that last turn? Tomac has taken the lead from Plessinger. Plessinger coming back. Great racing, as usual, in this 450 division. Eli Tomac. It uh, looked like... Oh, look, AP around the outside. Oh, he almost had it. He is aggressive trying to get back around Tomac. He wished he wasn't quite following because he could have pulled the trigger, but instead has to abort, almost runs into the back of him. All day long, third in Moto 1. This battle continues. Roxon and Ferrandez side by side again. Look at this pack up front. Tomac, Plessinger, and Roxon now. He's looking for running room on the number seven. But he's got to be careful now. Oh, Tomac oh, does not, not going to make it. Oh. Roxon's not going to make Larocco's leap. He comes up way short. That had to hurt. There's a wrist brace. And I know that wrist isn't the greatest. No, he has had some injuries to both of those arms. That's well documented. You hit caught fire. Whoa. Roxon going after Plessinger. And this uh, time, Roxon does not jump Larocco's yeah, leap. He, he knew better. He dominated the sixth moto of the season to win it. And he's looking for another moto win today. And it is really, oh. sir. Yeah, I don't know if it's maybe just also tr trading mistakes potentially, but it new line here on the inside, or maybe Plessinger. Oh, Plessinger just oh, Rocco! I cannot believe Roxon went oh. for it again. Uh, you know, Kenny got around and then he just hovered for quite a while, and a couple of times looked like he might even 
think about having a lunch. Cheering from the crowd. And uh, time starting there to tick down. Oh, no! That's Crossing what it was. Has crashed. Hand yep. side of the shot. You'll just see him coming flying in there. Woo! And I don't know if he was cut indecisive because I feel like Varanis is fi finding his groove again. The gap is coming down. That's true. Last lap around, Ferrandis 208.6. Plessinger 209.8. Tomac 209.6. Every time between races. Whoa, that was really good there. That was, didn't get into a rut or anything. But he is serious right now because he's dealing with Ferrandis who's got a line on the inside. It's going to be wheel to wheel to the sand rollers. Look at Ferrandis, how good he is getting the power to the ground. I mean, AP, AP's been so strong. I mean, this is his rookie season, and so, uh, I mean, not a lot of guys really come in and do this, and the fact that he's doing it, it's, you know, exceeding the expectation. You won it in your rookie year on a 450, but then you've told me it wasn't <laughs> as easy as it looked from the outside to pull that off. So, uh, he is coming after Eli Tomac with a lap to go. He's cut it from 3.3 to 1.5. Eli Tomac on the last lap of the moto like i said he's one of the fittest riders we've ever seen in this series but Ferranis is just an animal oh eli saw the back just dance around a little bit got a little sideways but he brought it back real quick yeah he is hustling barsha ahead of webb and then savachi has moved into 10th around max anstey savachi on the rocky mountain atv and racetrack left yeah he needed about five to ten bike lengths to have a shot into this section unless tomac makes a mistake i kind of hard Absolutely gonna leave these guys scratching their heads. What do they got to do to hold him off late in these races? Not enough Eli Tomac is gonna win the second moto for the second week in a row in Lucas Oil Pro Moto And able to take the lead away. So, motosport.com, whole shot to Webb, but rocks in your early leader. Aaron Plessinger is third. Showing he can do it in all different ways, but he's oh, and Plessinger off the track there. In fifth, and there is Dylan Ferrandis. And right behind Ferrandis, you got Eli Tomac, and Tomac's down to the inside of the number three. Nasty of the tracks get the better he seems to do, and right now he looks really good at the moment. Oh, almost comes together with Ferrandis. He He's going to run that outside. Eli is all over this racetrack trying to get around Ferrandis. Will he cross him up? No, he ran out of room. I just came to a standstill in the middle of the turn. Tomac continues attacking Ferrandis. He's going to go way down to the inside. Looks like Ferrandis was able to get around Craig. Tomac is going to have to follow him. Series leader. Tomac to the inside on Craig. He's got one. He's going to have a good sweeping line in this turn. And... Oh. Tomac right around Muskan as well. Mark tries to run it back in on him. Tomac has clawed his way back to Ferrandis, so they made moves on a couple of riders, Craig and Muskan. But it's still early days. These guys are still feeling relatively fresh, but oh, landed in that soft spot right there. Right he, there. He's ready to pounce. And Cien Cerullo has caught Webb. So you've got second, third, fourth, fifth moment for Aaron Plessinger after all of those podium finishes can you give us an idea of what you felt out there on the track that made you pull in yeah. you know really good really good spot for a podium uh, even a win but uh, broke inside the motor and uh, it, it didn't really run right after that so. for Aaron Plessinger. he still managed to smile so I was wrong even that can't keep Aaron Plessinger's spirits down start overheating 
One thing I have learned with these Monday four strokes, they're very reliable. Oh, Man, once he again, he lands. Spot, yeah. He's... Oh, yeah. Tons of steam coming out. Okay. So what I was getting at is I've learned with these modern four strokes, when you see steam, it's okay. Danger zone that we no, about. no, the wrong danger zone. Meanwhile, Ferrandez is making passes anyway. He goes around Cooper Webb. It's happening. Remember, his teammates bike just quit. Tomac around Webb. Major drama here in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Your series leader, Dylan Ferrandez, making passes. That's to the good. Yeah, I said it at break, but coolant coming out is not the end of the world. It's when it runs out of coolant. We're seeing that steam. Oh! Ferrandez almost down. And Tomac, who's been putting serious pressure on him, goes by. Coolant, and that's when the engine's going to start melting. Yeah, and we saw our first look at the steam coming out 10 minutes into the... You know, dirt collecting in the radiator, so yeah. not enough cool air. Riding the clutch hard, riding hard, all that together can do that. Ferrandez is in fourth, seeing Cirillo third. Tomac has gotten around his teammate up to second. But, but uh -oh. guess what? I was about to say, Eli Tomac has put in a huge charge. I didn't expect him to get there that quickly. But Eli Tomac, just when you question him, he just brings it right back. And one, and just like that, what was a seven-second lead for Roxon is gone. Yeah, it's, it's long gone. <laughs> and so is Tomac. But released some steam over the years but i gotta say right now he looks good the bike looks good wow, that's if ferrandez's bike continues to run meanwhile tomac <laughs> on the move 218 the last lap four seconds quicker than everyone eli tomac looking at the moto victory it would be three in a row in the second moto only three moto wins this year but four overalls for dylan ferrandez one of our title contenders down oh it's the right hand first turn too that makes it a little more difficult as well also not a good opening lap there for uh someone else goes down not a good call oh, tomac for either uh monster star yamaha maybe thor the gear company as he's three yamaha riders fight information mistake on the inside by the 29 of craig fastest lap as you say jason second half of the moto ferrandez comes alive and we see the rest of the field coming through. We'll hold here to watch Tomac, and oh. he has already caught Webb. If he keeps up this pace, um, he's going to be right there in the to, able to win this thing at the end. So something to watch for. And he just Whoa. blows by Webb in the sand whoops. Cowie 450 and can open the throttle. Look at that power slide off a drop off. <laughs> that is that is that is commitment. And here comes Tomac. Oh, big power move around the outside, just like he did to Webb. He's picking these guys off in bunches. They're not holding him back at all this is vintage eli tomac we used to call him the shark in the water you had to think about where is he even if you couldn't see him well we can now tomac had to get on the brakes in turn one to avoid the pile up with sexton roxon and more and he has come from that about 30th petition has really picked up gotten deep and he just has been head and shoulders above everyone as far as pace goes this first moto all right well he had a lot of stuff in his throttle so they were trying to clear it out and clean it up as much as he possibly could just frustration all over his face though Let's see what kind of drive he can get on the outside. Uh, lines came together. Ferrandez took a look over his shoulder, and he saw the dreaded big number three. The Barcha, face full of roost, right there on Ferrandez. Ferrandez comes back. Another little look over the shoulder from Ferrandez. I could see Tomac passing there it is. them. On the inside, Tomac tried to tip though through that line. Wasn't quite enough, but it's on Ferrandez. Absolutely, Barcha is now out of the picture. He's pulled away. Ferrand is having to deal with pressure from behind, not something that he's had to deal with much. This is a couple bike legs. Oh, mistake from Ferrandez. Goes from the left to the right-hand side of the track. Tomac getting closer again after the mistake entering. Oh, so, Sam watching nearly an endo. Side with Barsha. What's the strategy here? Does he cut underneath? Barsha hangs him out on the outside. Yeah, Barsha just a counter block pass, and that has allowed Tomac right back at that. Pressure will get to a lot of guys. Often not him. Ferrandez oh. had a line and they almost collided as the white flag comes out. 
Balsha apologizing. Just has to get a run at the beginning of this section. That was better. Yes, absolutely. This is as close as he has been to Ferrandez through here in several laps. Can he carry the speed? Look at this. Is Ferrandez going to defend? Oh, Ferrandez does go to the outside where Tomac had been the entire moto. They fight for second as Barsha tries to run and hide. And he should. That inside now not working at all. Oh, oh no, Barsha bobbles. Recovers. Still holds the lead. A couple of mistakes on previous laps. Perfect this time. Barsha takes his first moto win of the year. Let's go racing. Barsha, another good start. He's got the 19 of Justin Bogle on the outside, but down from being out of Moto One into third place already. Impressive. So rocks and beaten and banged up in that first moto, coming right back here, third early, and he's going for second. Boy, talk about just being shot out like a cannon. Got taken off in the medical cart, Moto One. Now he goes to the outside. Unbelievable run around the outside, Barsha. There was nothing he could do. <laughs> he even looks over like, wow, they just cleaned that outside really good. And Ken Roxon leads Moto2. Make up some of the points that he lost by not finishing the first Moto today. Isn't motocross just unbelievable? In Moto1, Roxon goes down. He looks like he's out of this championship, out of the series. And Ferrandis has the opportunity to make up 25 points. Right side right. of the screen. There's oh. Ferrandis getting sideways yeah. and down. He was loose coming into that turn. And oh. then, oh, Marvin ends up hitting into Plessinger. We expected this. Barsha is going to try to hang in the number two spot. And when you combine the two motos together, could be looking at an overall win for Barsha. But it's very early. Only a lap and a half into this one. Certainly hurt the results much better now for the 23. Yeah, Sexton always shows a lot of speed and potential, but just whether it's bad luck, bad starts, opening, opening lap crashes, all kinds of things. Gets Avachi there. ...of Chase Sexton trying to get around your Supercross champion, Cooper Webb. Been a little different here in motocross for the number two of Webb. He's fighting with everything he has to hold Sexton off. They almost collide! Webb! A down hard at the finish line! I think they did make contact. I think that's what caused it right there. See the rear wheels touch right there, oh. and then see what happens to Webb. So they went for what we call scrub, not common. And I'm surprised Sexton didn't get affected at all. And Cooper Webb's bike just ends up smacking that sprinkler. Empty class. The starts have not been there this year, but when he gets rolling, he is almost impossible to hold back. And he's really strong to this section, especially in Moto One. He was good there. Ooh, little fishtail. Oh, which Savachi also makes a mistake. For your series leader, Ferrandez, he goes down for a second time. Ooh, this is where you just got to take a deep breath. Two seconds. It's one and a half. It's 1.7. Barcher doesn't need to beat Roxon for the overall, but you can tell he is not giving up on this Moto win. He is keeping Kenny honest. Yeah, running good solid laps and for Barsha too. Be a little feather in his cap. Barsha makes up a ton of ground right there. And what's odd is he's on the outside. That's <laughs> yeah. where Roxon passed him. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> oh! oh! Barsha feet off the pegs. No problem. Still does the uphill triple. And throws a wheelie <laughs> uphill. Energy Kawasaki is trying to get Joey Savachi here, the 17. And Chase Sexton is right in front of them. Oh, what a oh. mistake by Savachi. That made it easy on Tomac. Yeah, Tomac has to try and make these passes as quick as possible because they've lost, they've pretty much lost sight of the leaders, but third place certainly right in front of him. Another rider is down on the track. So it looks like both Roxon and Barsha played it right. Now they're back up to race pace as we go down the 200-foot Mount Martin. Named after, of course, John and Greta Martin, the track owners. Yeah, another 212 from Kenny there. Barsha a little bit slower, so... Kenny gives himself a little bit of a buffer. Now two seconds. Ferrandis up to ninth after a pair of crashes early. We've got world-class motocross competition here. A pair of Frenchmen going at it in Minnesota. He got the number 14 of Dylan Ferrandis. Two crashes early in this race. He just made a pass for eighth place. And he's got more room because here is the pass on Justin Bogle. So now he's up to seventh. Yeah, just stayed really low through there. And sixth. We check in with Chase Sexton on the 23 Honda in third. And Eli Tomac is now lurking. He's made up a ton of ground. Was borderline top 10 at best in the early motos of the championship. Fell way behind in points. And out of nowhere, in the sixth moto of the series of Pennsylvania at high point, he won it. Then he won the second moto at the next race. And he won the second moto at the next race. 
But the first motives have still been a problem. He'll give it everything. Oh, I thought maybe he'd have a chance, and I think, yeah, I think his teammate may make this easy on him. Craig's going to fight. No, Craig comes back on the inside. Is that the better line? No. Some fight. Doesn't want to just roll over. Fran is now going to charge to the inside. Long way around for Savace. I don't know if that's going to work. It isn't. Can't give Ferrandez an opening. Savace going to try to come back again. The road, and that's 10 seconds. I would highly doubt that's going to happen that short period Look, of time. Look, Cooper Webb on the left side of the screen going to lap down. Had that huge crash early in the race. Good to see that Webb was able to get back into it. He'll try everything. He gives you everything he has when he's out on the track. Off the track, the fitness, if anything, he's had times where he's probably trained almost too hard. But he's got the right formula today. So Barsha will win the overall. An excellent rebound. He crashes out of Moto 1. He comes back to win Moto 2. Ken Roxon. Just went around the outside and railed that outside edge and good start for Sexton. Try to find a line on Webb and he almost went into Sexton. It worked though. He's taking the lead from the number two. But uh, got pushed a little wide by his teammate and Cooper was committed to that outside. Railed it and like you said came out of nowhere. At times there's five or six guys that are super fast all at the same time. Including number three Eli Tomac who's on a mission right now to get around. Don't know if he's close enough. Oh, 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 oh. he is. <laughs> he made up that gap. Wow. Tomac is closing. He's got it under one second now between he and Plessinger. Plessinger getting sideways again. Oh, yeah. It's not what these guys want to hear, but uh, telling you, second half look of just pure aggression, just charging everything. And Plessinger is riding a great race in front of him, and it's a good feeling. And then all of a sudden, you've got some guy just harassing you. What? That was an immediate attack. He just leaped say that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the train just keeps coming Ferrandis gets out of that rut second but here comes Eli Tomac on a mission from third yeah, Tomac really starting to get the pace going I mean in these conditions again you would think with his aggressive riding style that this would not be his best track but we have seen epic second moto charges from him to dig out race win now he's got this big leap at the end of the whoops can he line this up Side by side, Sexton takes the line away. Oh! Big power move by Tomac. Gets him into the inside, but not close enough. Sexton shuts the door again. Battle. So just a little cushion. You can see it's actually just over three seconds. Is Eli just going to go for the stuff? Mm. I thought about it. Side by side with Sexton. Whoa! Eli tried everything. Woo. This might work this time. If he can square it up underneath Sexton and get a good drive, and he does. Oh! Not much Sexton could have done. He put up a good fight there, but hey, still got the overall in the bag. Should Tomac not catch Ferrandez? Not. <laughs> here it is. Listen to the crowd. You can see how pumped they are. Two laps to go. And we'll give you the lap time here in a second. The two. Won't even know that quite just yet. I mean, I'm sure he can hear the crowd and knows that someone's back there, but probably does not know who it, who it is. the battle everyone has wanted to see all year. Dylan Ferrandez and Eli Tomac both on their A game on the same day. They're both so strong late. Round was his best lap of the moto 214.3. He shut that gap down. The crowd is into it. Ferrandez knows someone is there. We don't know if it's exactly who it is and he's probably going. The one guy you do not want to see right behind you at the end of the moto. Seen 
some epic late moto charges from Eli Tomac, and he's putting it together right now. He made up one and a half seconds. Talked about let's have a look at the lap times when they cross. Do they get the rhythm nice and clean through the whoops there? White flag waves and lap time 214. Watch him on the outside of this right hander. He's going to try the same thing. Watch, he's going to swing to the outside. Ferrandis may not know this, but Eli knows his inside can work. Oh, no, it wasn't quite close enough. Ferrandis is going to have to be picture perfect. He can't let the crowd and the pressure get to him. He's a seasoned veteran, but Tomac. How will Tomac play it? He's going to go way wide here on the entrance to Horsepower Hill. Oh, he got a bit of a slingshot, but I think he ran a little bit high. Get back to the rear wheel of Ferrandis. Last couple corners did not work in Tomac's favor. God, Ferrandis is really, really putting the hammer down. Far. Yeah, I mean, he is just hammering his last few turns and hasn't made the mistake of oh, a yeah. little one there. But he's got a gap now. Again, it's, as you said, not enough for the overall, but a clutch second moto win for Dylan Ferrandis. What's Ferrandis' lap time? 214.6. His fastest lap of the race was the very last lap of the race. Roxon gonna lead them in. Maybe in the top three. Oh! Sexton goes flying. Those mistakes have really kept him out of this championship uh, battle. And he looks a little bit banged up there. Plessinger so, a little bit better line through that section, closing back up now as we head. Leading group, but he's got to make short work of Cooper Webb as he tries. He's up the inside. Big uphill here. Gets to Kawasaki in front of Webb. Yeah, he needed that. He didn't want And Plessinger trying to build up his resume here. He wants the lead from Roxon. We've got a battle on our hands. Everyone but one. Plessinger is right there. The general philosophy is these bikes are so fast. We're trying to make it controllable. They said the first thing we're going to do is try to develop the most horsepower we can. It's working right now, although again, Roxon able to stretch the lead back out. Ferrandis, eight seconds back. And Ashley? Well, it's been pretty quiet over here in the mechanics area, but I did get a chance to uh, see the communication between Aaron Plessinger. Yeah, yeah. Rodgers talking about he gets stuck in the pace. Exactly, yep. and, and, and that's what it is, your race. And what's so hard to keep that intensity. Whoa! First time they were nearly side by side, and we're headed toward lap traffic. Roxon and Plessinger, Tomac and Mustan. We jump downhill. Two horse race. This turn is starting to get a little bit brutal. At the we are back, and things have changed in a hurry. It's a track where we have seen this happen before, a bizarre crash. See AP lands, and then all of a sudden the front just sort of pops up, and like you said, just oh, very and tender, and right? And it's oh. into an uphill with braking bumps, so he really jams himself. But the German rider is going to come out on top. Ken Roxon, a dominant first moto win here. Chase Sexton goes to motosport.com whole shot. Yeah, and as you said, he held it together that time. Now the key thing is where's our title contender? With Ferrandis right behind him in fourth. There's Roxon number 94. Well, after the Moto 1, you heard what Ferrandis said. I don't know if I have anything for Ken Roxon. Hairpin corner right here. Roxon tries to tuck underneath. Ooh. Almost <laughs> passed him, but also almost went down. That was impressive. Power sliding across those ruts. That was a lot of grit and determination right there. Gutsy move. Yeah, we have not seen anyone make a pass in that section of the track. So good job by Roxon. It's impatient. He can see the front two disappearing. He goes to that outside. I think he's got it down this time. Wow, making passes. But he's about to feel the heat from Roxon. Wow, Kenny had a good line there. Went to the outside and all the way on the very right-hand side. Marshugel, but can't be that bad. He won on that bike. Oh! oh, Sexton almost threw it away. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, how these ruts, they're like... Ken Roxon has slipped by his teammate, Chase Sexton. Not sure where that happened. Saw so Sexton looks like he's backed off the pace. He'll stay over these jumps. He carries so much forward drive. See there? Oh. He did that the lap before and the lap prior. And right, yeah, no point of failure talks this week. It's going to be all about the success. If they can hold on for a lap and a half, Roxon goes by. Here is Sexton, his young teammate. He has the checkered flag in sight. Ken Roxon doesn't just win Unadilla. He dominates Unadilla. This
Cooper Webb's going to grab your motorsport.com hole shot. I think it was Tomac right behind him, and then rocks into third. Down in the first turn. Meanwhile, Roxon already around Tomac and Webb under pressure. Leader, don't see him near the front. Ken Roxon makes a great Woo! move there. Got a good drive off that off camber uphill. It's about par for him. Yeah, exactly. Not a whole shot artist. And then behind him would actually be Shock, put sure. from Sexton and is right back to Webb. These two or three corners, man, Eli's tough to stop. Look at him arcing to try to get. And, and he's going to try and force Whoa! it. Oh! That was slick. He was arcing into that turn without the brakes on. That was like, all right, Webb's going to have to really get a drive around the outside. Sexton the short way around, side by side. Henry Hill put him to the inside. This could be the move. Webb fighting, trying to slide back to Ooh. the inside. Sexton's got it. Oh, oh look, look at Sexton that. Sexton right there on Tomac takes the spot away. Oh, Eli Tomac. Tomac maybe made a little mistake coming to that turn and had to choose that outer line. But uh, either way, Sexton took opportunity right try to go to that inside as well same thing tomac did he's on the inside and he's got him well cooper's also got to learn from that it gasses it eli's getting ready to cut cut back to the inside and all of a sudden he sees a blue machine there could not do anything after that well we'll have a look kenny picked it up just a little bit that time around at 152 but again sexton in the 151s The mission is clear. They've got to keep the Yamaha rider behind them to help Roxon score max points. Front. Oh, the, the lap time show at last lap around. Kenny and, and Dylan were... Allow Roxon to get away and Ferrandez to put the pressure on. Can Sexton find it again? Oh, Ferrandez is putting the heat on. Ooh. No, Sexton able to squeeze him off. Ferrandez doing a good job keeping that outside oh. as short as he can. And with a lap rider in front of Sexton. I don't know if you're Ferrandez, if you're Kenny Roxton, it's a very welcoming <laughs> sight. So, yeah, Ferrandez is going to be like, ah, oh, man. He's based actually out of Maryland as well. So he's putting in his best run of the year. And now he gets to get lap. That's the difference today. Be an interesting half a lap. He got held up a tad there. And Ferrandez obviously now can see it. It's all unfold. Unbelievable what Ferrandez can do late in these races. It looked like hope was lost. He was a distant fourth. Oh, oh, that sweeper right before the finish line. That would be a heartbreak for right Roxon. Roxon makes a mistake. He's trying to get around Chisholm. He looks over it. He does. Keeps the door closed. And Ken Roxon is going to win the first moto here at Bud's Creek. Ferrandez right there. Uh, look at Ferrandez. He is not it's happy. Cross racing. Who leads coming out of it? I believe it's Ken Roxon with a motosport.com whole shot. Cooper went hard. So Roxon's so good early in the races. Now he's coupled that with the early lead in a whole shot. Oh, Sexton's got an inside line. I think he's got the pass made. No. Ferrandez, a handful of throttle burst back. As these two battle for the number three spot. Sexton on the outside. Switches back to the inside. Yeah, this is uh... it is all over him. Oh, look at that. Cutting from outside to inside. Can Sexton complete the pass? Top of the hill. And you see Sexton able to get the better of him. And Roxon already pulling away. Look at Sexton attacking. Sexton, his teammate behind him. So that's going to be a bit more comforting for those guys. Ferrandis wish he had his teammate as he does the same thing he did earlier in the day. Up the inside of Webb. They're going to drag race to the finish line. Oh. So that inside and maybe get a better drive at the exit of this turn. They're going to drag race up the hill again. Now Webb will be on the inside. Or not. Oh, oh, but just around the outside. Hooking up and taking the spot away. That was old school vintage Eli. Oh, this is going to get interesting. Look at that. There's a four in the camera. Unbelievable. Four. One, two, three, four. In the old. Oh, oh, mistake for Roxon and Sexton is almost there to make the pass. Certainly you have to account, yes, for Tomac. Be one, I say a little bit lucky, but two, you've got to be really uh, proactive in how you see where the, the lappers are going in this position. And the reason I said is the fin out of the water. Eli Tomac, his nickname is the Shark for a reason. This Tomac from fourth on the green machine, all over Ferrandez. Oh, and Sexton almost got run. It's going to shoot by. That could have. That was almost a little bit like what happened to Craig. That replay we just saw of Christian Craig from Moto One. Sexton almost did a call. Two things to watch. Yes, Roxon under fire from Ferrandez and Tomac looking for running room to get around Sexton for third. On the outside here, he's been very quick up this hill. Oh, can he get it? He's got it this time. Kenny was able to hold it off. It's a six-point swing. That's kind of a big deal with three rounds to go. Should Kenny? You, yeah. You've got Tomac right there. Yeah, you got to look forward. <laughs> Easier said than done.
Spectacular racing. Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Ken Roxon leads. Three spot on that green Kawasaki. Downhill we go. Ferrandis trying to outbreak Roxon into the bottom. Say we haven't seen many riders close motos like these two. And that's what Roxon's up against right now. Wow, those. And the one good thing is Eli's been able to watch this 20 minute headstrong outside. First uphill and have to peel out of that line. Ferrandis did not use the outside. He was inside going on the uphill. And look at Tomac. They open up larger gaps in the field and it doesn't take long. Also, they cut one section of the track out due to all the rain we had. So it's rough. But now Ferrandis looking to the outside. Oh, here we go. Roxon's going to have to seal him off. He does. But off camera, we've seen both lines work at different times. The inside is working better at the moment. One of the big leaps. Okay, Ferrandis going to slice to the inside. They almost Whoa. touch wheels. Roxon around the outside. Did he have enough to hold him off? He does. Yes, but he stepped out of the line. Now Ferrandis is going to try this inside. Oh, he stands him up. He got him a break. So Roxon could not knife underneath. Roxon's spirit. But for Kenny... Can he go with Ferrandis? Kenny is really good at riding his cup. And there you see, absolutely, as you said, you know that Ferrandis is going to want to put in a burner lap gap on Dylan Ferrandis. He won the first moto earlier today. He led this moto, but second half of the race, and will it's it be two be... laps to go, or is it going to just barely not expire, and they'll have to go a whole nother lap before the two lap to go sign? Is way too winning the 250 championship, but look how close Roxton is. Two little mistakes, yeah. and all of a sudden that lead is gone. He's dealing with mistakes, and now he's dealing with pressure from Ken Roxon. They've lapped up to 14th. Unbelievable how hard they are pressing the pace today. Focus in on himself. Don't make a big mistake. See the bike still moving around. Four corners, sending back the momentum that Roxon gained. Because Roxon won our last race last Saturday. Yamaha's 250 outfit. They have built one heck of a 450 for him. And Dylan Ferrandis wins at Bud's Creek. And you can see how important this is. Joey Savacci going to leave it into the first turn. Karen second. And the championship contender, second points Roxon. Looked like he was about sixth. Tomac yeah, on the inside Roxon. of Ferrandis. Going to be side by side for second. It's got to finish the move here. Oh, Ferrandis just holds it on the inside. And they almost got Savacci. But hopefully that can uh, put a little pressure on him. And he may surprise himself and lead some laps here. Look at this battle. Ferrandis and Tomac. In. He's right there with Tomac. Now that's Roxon. Oh, that is Roxon. That was out of nowhere. Top speed is unbelievable. What we're seeing him 6 7. Meanwhile, Ferrandis goes for the lead on Savachi. And Roxon's. Wow, look at the scrub that Roxon put on right there. He drugged the foot peg on the Honda. Go to the inside. Almost had a line. No, he made a mistake. No, he still is going to take the lead. How is that possible? And the crowd here at Iron Man, they're going ballistic as Roxon goes from. I'm going to say six to the second. It's not enough, but Ferrandis is not done. He's challenging Roxon to try to take the lead back. Was the overall winner here last year at Ironman Raceway. Ferrandis right back there with Roxon. Can Ferrandis get it done? Whoa. Oh, they almost come together. Ferrandis to the lead. We're going to collide. Okay, so Roxon going to have to reset the attack. Tomac lurking there as well. This is spectacular. Do he's got completely different lines than Roxon, although now he will slide in behind him. Savachi and Webb. The rider, I love seeing it because I'm like, okay, where are the lines? Where is the rider carrying more, more momentum? Jump just like Jet Lawrence did in the first mode. We got over the top of that hump, turned it into a double. Horrendous. But it looks like the next double after that, the outside is better. So it looks like to... to wow, that's a good ride. Yep. Hartraff just got around him, as did Plessinger. Shock. Breaking bumps that are made of sawdust, they move around. So between the first lap and the last lap, those lines will completely change here. Um, but off of the start, maybe with adrenaline and everything, maybe you're up around, I would say, sorted things out. Yep. I mean, we're not even 10 minutes into the moto right now. So now you need to kind of manage your heart. These yeah. three looking for lines, studying each other, setting each other up. Tomac, he might be in position to try to work that inside just before the finish line next time around on Roxon. Oh, he is eating so much what roost. A, what a great shot. And look. Oh, Roxon's right there almost to make the pass. Bar to bar, they almost came together, and Roxon could not execute the jump. That far wide, 
I'm thinking that that outside line had a big hook in it, and it came back across Roxon's line. Free lunch. I, I, I'm getting nervous right now as Tomek gets closer and closer. We'll give you a box and a box. This is it's getting closer to Ferrandez again. It almost depends on what section of the track we're looking at who has the advantage. All right, well, get ready. Slap yep. around. But that is great uh, team strategy right there. Of course, they have multiple people on the team with radio headsets on. inside. There it is. Perfect. He did. So Roxon does not make up the ground this time. So Cooper Webb is little by little finding his groove here in right. this uh, championship. Was. You know, it's always tough to, to get inside and learn more about this, but... Agreed. Well, meanwhile, Tomac, uh, he almost used an inside line to pass Roxon there. I don't know if you noticed that, Jeff. I'm not going double or nothing. Fans here at Ironman... I mean, they were lined up at 6.30 in the morning to get free donuts. Look at the race they're, they're uh, getting to witness. Oh, Roxon almost found a line to get Ferrandez, who had to look it over to put time into these guys. They come right back to his rear fender. Well, and you want to settle in. Once you get the lead, you want to settle in. Back on Roxon. He's tried this inside a couple of times. And then this next straightaway, we have actually seen some passes. Right, you have to accelerate, oh, decelerate. Oh, oh. Tomac right there. Tomac the to inside. the inside again. Nope. Roxon just able to hold it back about four laps in a row. That's from where he was at. Oh, oh Tomac, a new line. He sliced underneath Roxon. Now, Roxon had been close to the inside of that corner. Now the question, Jeff, can, can Tomac, can he make the move on Ferrandez? We're going to be watching this one very closely. Just one corner battling with Roxon. How many fans are here uh, being treated to a fantastic Moto 1 of the four fifths? Webb's going to be on a, on a, could get a podium here, so. Webb, I'm really impressed with him. I know he's stops to go, but still, overall, it's a, a really good moto for him. There's that inside line from Tomac. Different view of it from. Towing around a turn, that's when the heat starts to kind of, you know, sink in. You can feel it. But here, plenty of breeze in a row with uh, Washugal, Minnesota and Unadilla and Bud's Creek since he's won. He was extremely disappointed in that finish. So Dylan Ferrandez isn't thinking about this massive gap that he has on the season. Yeah, there's no championship management mode right now. He has Tomac all over him and he is fighting for this moto win. Boxen. Yeah, it should be about about two seconds between first and third. But officials, you see him right there in the background has that blue flag waving. Uh, some of the lap riders don't always move out of that line. Whatever you want to call it, back and forth. Now Tomac has lost a bunch of ground, has to get around a lap rider. Ferrandez has his opportunity to run and hide and then hand up ahead. I think that was actually Harlan they were dealing with before. I mean, when you're the man, it's like great ride. Yes, huge pressure from Roxon and Tomac. Once again, Dylan Ferrandez overcomes all. He wins the first moto. And what it takes to outlast someone who is that strong and notoriously fit down the stretch from Iron Man. Behind him. Webb trying to get inside. Not able to do it, so Ferrandez to the lead. Then he'll be on the left side of the racetrack, trying to get inside the 23 of Sexton. That's a battle for third. Webb taken away from Ferrandez, who's going to leave the brakes off late into this corner of Webb. That uh, gaining confidence, you know, and when you have that, it's just, uh, it's a it's a huge thing, and Jeff, Jeff can attest to that. It's rough. He seems to... Oh, he almost had the oh, inside. Yeah, just... Yeah, I was giving it up there. Let's Ferrandez, Tomac, Sexton, Roxon. Now we have Webb in the mix as well. Ton of time on Ferrandez. Can he use it to get the lead? It's on the inside. Not close enough. Looking for running room on Ferrandez. Tomac around the outside again. Watch this outside line out like they were in Moto 1. And Ferrandez comes from the inside out. Kind of makes a nice arc around. Roller to carry the momentum. But Woo! Tomac, a big over jump. Just sending it. This straight away on Ferrandez. Let's see if he can make uh, the pass. He's finally got it. Ferrandez is like photo two. He's got the job done. And you know what he wants now? The lead from Webb. Look at the dirt flying off the back. Out into that takeoff. And they drag the foot pegs through those ruts. This year, today could be the day. But he's got to get around Webb first. Each and every moto now here lately is starting to get a little better. A little more comfortable. There. And Tomac, who used the outside the last time around, went inside. He actually looks back over his shoulder to make He almost did. Look, Ferrandez is right there. Yeah, Ferrandez trying to regroup a little bit. Starting to get to that point in the season where you really have to be conscious of that. 46-point lead over for fourth. As Tomac begins to put the press on Webb. 
which obviously takes a lot of pressure off. Tomac will focus back on the battle for the lead because Tomac wants it. Jump at the top of the hill. Whoa, oh, that's Webb. close. Here's the thing about Webb. He is so crafty. It, it, look, they're look, they both want that the outside. outside. They, they both want it. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a couple. The riders are going all the way outside, finding the smooth line, and, and it's working for him. Oh, and, that's oh. close, too. And let's see about Roxon. Yes, he's in fourth, so he has completed the pass. On Ferrandez determined to make that left side work. He got passed a couple of times in that. That's one of those areas where there's a lot of sawdust on the track. So those lines are going to move as the moto goes on. They're going to change. In and Tomac seems like he's doing that each and every lap. Okay, he's been trying this outside right here. And right exchange. Tomac comes in hot around the outside to set up for the inside here. Can he complete the pass? He's got it. You're really riding, you know, very much like the years that he won the title on the podium is that Tomac said he felt really fresh, said he felt great, where uh, Ferrandis, who won the moto, podium today with Roxon back in fifth year. Webb would be looking at 4-3 scores. But he said after the race last week, he has a lot of motivation to try to get a win. Eli Tomac is back. He wins the overall here at Ironman Raceway. Well, he mentioned on the podium that even though he was second, Ken Roxon, yes, in the lead right now. He's at the motosport.com. Whole shot, Cooper Webb and Ferrandis. Fox coming. Racing VIP Suite, one of the perks of being the sponsor of this uh, facility here. So all the fans up there on the podium hadn't been in any of the press conferences this year. Made a huge change, change to the bike uh, from what uh, some people are able to ascertain. Inside, there's going to get a big run. Here he is to the inside. Switches from outside in. Ferrandis to the inside again. Oh, he's got the attack on, and this time he makes the pass. Nice move there. He just stayed after it. It's about the time that uh, Ferrandis got into second place when he made his way past Webb. I mean, it's less than 1.8. Right. And he is already putting the attack on Roxon. Side by side, Roxon able to hold him off for the moment. And uses diagonal rut to the inside, and Ferrandis already has it. Stop right there. <laughs> I mean, that. Uh oh, Tomac hard on the throttle. Webb able to fight him off. They scrub together. Championship run today. Whoa, oh, it's close. Big kick. Trying to find a smooth line there on the oh, inside. Oh, he gets caught up with lappers. Oh, is Tomac, yes, able oh. to take advantage. Timing and scoring has him in second. Wow. Went from, yeah, then there we see Roxon. So just like that. Oh, Campbell is mechanic and everybody on this star team. This combination is pretty good as well. Wrapping the title early. What a phenomenal season it has been. Another accolade for him. He wins the first moto here in California. Very tricky. Roxon triples to the inside. Side by side. Just slices through and takes the lead. Unbelievable. Here today. And you don't often see this from Ferrandis early in the races. It's usually a couple of laps settles in. Tomac, I don't even know where he came from. A couple of passes on lap one, and he's there for a challenge. Tomac goes into, this is where I was using the Telestrator earlier, those big hooks in it. See the bike kick back? Still, though, Ferrandis having the championship on the line, how hard will he fight for the Moto win? We're going to have to wait and see here 25 minutes from now. All right. The Houston Supercross in 2018, he got hurt in Anaheim, won the opener. Wasn't able to go in Houston, and that is it. He has made every other race for the Red Bull KTM team. Oh, Tomac, big power move from the outside to the inside, wow. and wheelies by. What a move. Whatever it may be, how many times have we seen Ken Roxon and Eli Tomac battle? It has to be one of the longest running Your volume of times that we have seen Tomac and Roxon battle. Tomac going to get the better of it this time. He's got the pass. Not that far behind, maybe five seconds, eight seconds. And take a look at the lap times there. The moto where, you know, Tomac, he's starting to feel it. 20 minutes left, it's hot, yes, but he definitely has a great flow, great speed. Tomac 
to close up on him. Ferrandez, all he's thinking about is keeping Roxon in his rearview mirror. And if he does that, he's going to be champion. Percent is, is what the race win is okay. for, the, for, the, for the championship. So That might be an indicator of how Ferrandez is going to choose to play this yep. one. Purcell crashes with the championship plate, like, in his hands, Absolutely. essentially, and hands the title over to uh, Trey Kennard. What? Holding the points lead, the potential to wrap up the title, and Eli Tomac all over him. But, but uh, Eli but was asked, when can you say where you're riding next year? And he said, uh, October 1st. Okay. Battle is on for the lead. Eli Tomac putting in a strong charge. How hard will Ferrandez fight with the title in balance? And Ferrandez looks over and Tomac takes the lead. And it's just over like that. Amazing accomplishment. 18 minutes plus two laps to go. And when you're out there, you're in the zone, but you definitely know what's going on. But you... 38 seconds. That's old school Tomac level gap. Yeah. It up with similar performances here. Yeah. You know, wheelie for his longtime mechanic, Brian Kranz, as he goes through the mechanics area. Parents, both world class mountain bike racers on a hot, brutal, tough day. Eli Tomac is the winner here at Fox Raceway. And here it is Dylan Ferrandez, the 2021 Pro Moto Cross champion of the 450 class. Wow. But Bobby Regan, the team owner, has trickled down from there. Uh, he's even rubbed people the wrong way sometimes, how competitive, how fiery he can be. But it is for moments like. Shoots out of the gate. He's got Ferrandez right throwing now. I can't believe he kept the KTM on two wheels. Roxon so quick out front. Get back around Craig for second. Tomac getting around Webb for fourth. Yeah, Webb, Webb saying the same. riders to beat, but he has fallen back to fifth right now. And let's see what he has as we focus on the two Yamaha. <laughs> uh, Webb oh. just shoots by Craig to retake third for the last two races. Now Tomac putting pressure on Craig. Whoa. Come together. But more than pressure on him. Out a winner. Roxon leads the way. We'll talk about the track conditions when we return. We might have a battle on our hands. Lately has been great start, fast lap time. For what, has, what is your preference? My preference is I think the track looks beautiful today. I wish I was out also, there. So, I mean, you're the guy. You're the newly crowned champion. And there's some pride in Replay. that. Top of your screen, uh, big spot though. This, so this through the first turn. Ferrandez looking for an opening on Roxon. You can see the fans getting fired up over this battle. Ferrandez on the inside. Riders and just squeaking by a lighter, uh, rider before you get into maybe a one-line section. Tomac just put in a 2.14.5. A 2.14.5. That's a second and a half faster. That is insane. I, I mean, Tomac's ability here in pro motocross and yeah, Ferrandis gets now he gets by also oh Tomac is down so he put in the burner lap let's see if Tomac. he catches a rock or something oh he just gets just a little too far outside of his not enough it looks like to me that Roxon has really held his line. guy behind and you can go anywhere on the track oh, well around the and outside Ferrandis gonna go he's oh. oh not quite close enough Roxon a good drive around the outside will be the story. This area they're headed to next. Roxon has been able to pull back away from Ferrandis. Right here. Oh, oh, and Roxon knew it. He could he could feel it. He could sense it. Oh, Ferrandis is there again. Roxon tried to go as close to the inside. It is on right now. Map TV live coverage. Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross. Dylan Ferrandis. So many times right there. Roxon had some lap riders to deal with. But right now, it's like he can do anything on He's the got motorcycle. It. He's got that it he down the inside. To. Absolutely. He got those jumps figured out. He knew. It doesn't seem to match up with either Dylan Ferrandis or uh, Eli Tomac of late. And LeMay, Rodbell, 
That is the top 10. Then it's Anstey, Noren, Bogle. Wait 90 hours a week working on both the practice and the race bikes. A lot of the family members of Star Racing. Does it anyway. Dylan Ferrandez, a dominant win in Moto 1 here at Hangtown. Whoa, a couple of riders. Oh, oh. starts for Noren. That's not the way he wanted it to go. So, oh, look at this. Craig taking the lead. Webb's going to try to get back to all. Oh, Ferrandez was in it. Down. Ferrandez was in that pile. How about Christian Craig not only taking the lead but pulling away quickly? Moto wears on those lines. Oh, Ken Roxon uh -oh. is in the mechanics area and appears to be done. He's taking off his boot. That's and there is Roxon being helped by the Alpine Stars medics team. There's Dr. John Bonder. We'll do what you ask for, but that much drama and we hadn't even made it to the Motorsport.com whole shot line yet. Back right behind. Him. Whoa! Slicing from outside to inside. Webb almost made the pass. If Craig goes outside, Webb's going inside. Here, here's the move. He's got the lead. But look who is lurking. Eli Tomac as quickly as Webb was going after Craig, trying to take it away from Christian Craig. It's now a battle for second as Cooper Webb. This inside line's been good. Craig makes a tiny mistake. Can Tomac power down the inside? Oh, look how rough that Last ride with Monster Energy Kawasaki. I mean, the statistics and the success he has right now. He knows what's on the line. He's so driven and so determined to see what's happening uh, with Webb. And look at that, emerging lines. Look for new lines on the track. This is for the overall. Oh, you love to see in the finale, even with the title wrapped up, two motivated riders. Webb made some major changes. Three straight victories going on top after a long run with Kawasaki. So these guys want it in the worst way, and you can see it right now. The fans here at Hangtown, they're waving the towels and the hats. They're Tomac's being on this downhill. Amazing race. They know the pass could be coming. In looks, looks ahead. Uh, Tomac does. going to see a couple of lapped riders uh, a, to respond and not let Tomac get comfortable. Look at this battle. So Tomac went around the outside, grabbed the tear off, was slow in the corner. He can win this moto. Possibly follow some of Tomac's lines. Accomplishment just for this moto right there just blows past Anstey on the outside. Uh, uh, it, was, it was for the title. Not for a race San win. San Antonio. Yes. They did it. Bob Hanna oh, won three and win the overall. <laughs> From nearly last at the beginning of this race, and he's trying to set up Craig. side. Not for long. Ferrandez has done it. He's taken over third, and that would be enough for the win today. East Coast. Meanwhile, this story, the long and very fruitful run with Eli Tomasaki together is going to end in a moto win. Second moto at Hangtown goes to Tomac. Respect the grit, the heart, the effort. Dylan Ferrandez wins the finale. We've asked him time and time again. Oh, look at that.